Welcome to Live, life-inspired views for every day. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm a curious soul. During the last year of my father-in-law's life, I was writing my dissertation and so had the freedom to give respite to my mother-in-law, his caregiver. You would have loved Harvey. He was a really special person in my life. One day during that time as I was leaving to go to Mayo for my yearly appointment, he gave me $40 and said, do something fun with this. So I went to my favorite little boutique near Mayo and bought a beautiful china coffee cup and saucer. I called it my Harvey cup and it sat in residence in my china cupboard ever since that time in 2008 until the pandemic began in 2020. I was still the school principal and had to suddenly work from home. And so instead of getting up early in the morning and calling substitute teachers before going to school to start the day, I was able to start the morning with a cup of coffee in my recliner before heading into my home office to work. I decided then to take my Harvey cup out of the cupboard and use it for those special early morning moments. That has become my ritual ever since. I sit in the early morning hours, read and sip coffee from my Harvey cup. That little moment has become a ritual. I look forward to it and enjoy it every day. Lately though, I've thought a lot about the importance of rituals in our lives. Some struggle to define the difference between ritual and routine, and to me, it doesn't matter. What matters is what it means to the person who enjoys it. So if you do something regularly or in a special way that holds meaning for you, you can call it your ritual. It reminds me of Agnes, a lady I met before our kids were born. When I visited her home, she showed me her overstuffed chair in the corner that she called her prayer chair. It was where she spent time in meditation, reading, filling up her soul. I always wanted to have that magical spot like Agnes, and now I do, along with my Harvey cup. Think for a minute of the kinds of rituals around us. If you have ever watched a professional batter get ready to bat the ball, they have all these ritualistic hand motions with the bat before they take their stand and get ready to hit. Or how about the rituals we use before we start a meal or get ready for bed? How about the meetings that are run by Robert's Rules of Orders? How many times have you heard people recollect memories of their youth by saying, my mother or father always used to, or we always, those indicate repeated behaviors or rituals. Bayung Chul Han is a German philosopher he once stated that rituals stabilize life. There is security in having certain familiar, repeated, and consistent practices in our lives. In our Western culture, researchers have noticed that collective rituals are disappearing. My friend Bill Ham told me about a California Lutheran University English professor named Dr. Jack Lipbitter, who took his class to a close-by seminary. The students stayed for the church service that was very formal and high church. It was full of rituals. The students loved it. They told the professor that if their church was like that, they would go all the time. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? We think those regimented rituals would turn away youth, but it seems it may be just the opposite. Al Dungan was a family friend who worked with people struggling with alcohol and drug addictions. He told me that people who grow up in families with rituals and traditions tend to reach a more permanent recovery from addiction. Is it the hook of familiarity or connection that bestows a strength in people? Is it the soothing nature that rituals provide? When I have worked with high school students after the death of a classmate, they often gather in hallways or in classrooms and I just start rocking gently, and soon the group joins in, creating a soothing calm. There is an instinctual rhythm in the act of rocking. Rocking is a wonderful ritual to ease the pain of loss or in the face of fear. Does it bring us back to the cradle or to the arms of a parent where we found that safety and security? It makes me think 
that we can even make a mental image of a ritual in our mind when we need to calm our anxious spirit. Rituals can provide a mental refuge, an internal rocking. The legendary novelist Toni Morrison would wake up at 5 a.m., make coffee, and watch the sunrise. I wonder if she, too, had a Harvey Cup. So what ritual do you do, or what would you like to start doing that could ground you in a meaningful way? Write it down. Put it on your bathroom mirror. And then let it bring you a magical sense of calm, peace, and joy, like a Harvey Cup. Join me next Monday for Live, Life-Inspired Views for Every Day. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm a curious soul.